Dakota Derue, the founder of Happy Healing Inc. I am dedicated to empower entrepreneurs by sharing tools, tips, and resources for wellness and more on my show, Steps to Feel Good Daily with Lana. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Steps to Feel Good Daily with Lana. You're in for a treat. Um, I'm really excited to learn from Caitlin Cogan Domer. Um, she is going to be teaching us about how to unpack your SALT, <laughs> and she is a somatic based coach, Caitlin Domer, once again. But before we get started and before I introduce her, I would like to let you know that I would love to support your feel good journey. I offer a free wellness check in and a sample emotion releasing session, and you can find me at happyhealing.me. Also, I always show an oil. So the oil for today is Blue Lotus. This is the oil of awakening. It helps you to feel guided, open, helps you to grow, feel inspired, liberated, purposeful, <sighs> radiant, and loved. Oh my goodness. So Caitlin, who is an extremely beautiful young lady here, I'm going to show you a picture of her. She, um, after she received her MBA, she started a successful sales management agency. She shifted and launched the Aesthetic Way a somatic-based coaching modality that allows people to rewrite their personal history and to take charge of their future. Yay, yay, yay. So let me bring Caitlin up right now. Hi, Hello. Caitlin. <laughs> Hello, Lana. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for this call. And I love Blue Lotus. It happens to be the base of my face serum that I use every night. Oh, it's really? Amazing oil. <laughs> it is. And yeah, doTERRA just came out with it last year, I think it was. And it's that beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful flower, right? So great. Yeah. So you had said, I had asked you the question, what's your mm -hmm. daily wellness step? And you said that your protocol is S-A-L-T, which is stop, soothe, align, listen, and take action. So let's talk about that mm -hmm. because that is your share. Yes, absolutely. So on my personal journey, I went through a season where I did everything. I was the high achiever. I checked all the boxes. I got the master's degree. I built the business. I wrote the books. I had the kids. Uh, that wasn't enough. So we decided to take our three kids and travel the world for three years. We visited 25 countries and all seven continents. And even that wasn't enough. And I found myself sitting on a tropical beach, uh, living everybody else's dream life and still feeling miserable inside. And that's really what sparked this discovery, this kind of spiritual path and journey that I went down and developed the ecstatic way framework. And the fundamental foundation of the ecstatic way framework is that while pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. And very frequently we get ourselves into this emotional tizzy about things that happen to us. And what we have to realize is that the things that happen to us are just facts. We don't have emotional responses to facts. We have emotional responses to stories. What is the meaning that we're attributing to these facts? And so learning to separate our stories from what really happened and learning that we can tell different stories allows us to take control of our own personal journey and experience uh, emotionally and end suffering. And I developed the SALT protocol as a way to make sure that people had a foundation that you have four steps to just keep yourself in alignment and as we're going through this every day as things come up as you said the the steps are to stop to soothe to uh that s step is really important because we want to make sure that we surrender to whatever is happening um, and so if you're in the middle of a conversation that's getting heated, maybe with a spouse or with your kids or with an employee or with your boss, you can say, you know what, I just need a minute to take a couple of deep breaths. And as you're taking those couple of deep breaths, I want you to say something like, 
I surrender. I release my expectations of what should be so I can receive the gift of what is here now. And that first step, just surrendering to what is, is a really powerful first step. So you said stop and then stay. I am say I'm surrendering to what could be. Well, I'm releasing, I'm releasing my, expectations my expectations of what okay. should, be. should be. Because a okay. lot of times it's that word should that gets us in an emotional knot where we say, mm -hmm. I should be further along. This should be going better. We, I should be more loved or in better shape. And this should word kind of gets us wound around our own axle. So as long as we are shooting all over ourselves, we're going to be in a state of suffering. But as long as we can say, you know what, whatever is happening now is exactly what's meant to be for my highest good. It allows us to just relax and look for what is the gift? What is the blessing for what's actually in front of you? Yeah, sometimes that's hard. Yeah, I think always it's hard. <laughs> This is definitely a practice and a habituation for sure. <laughs> yes, I, I have realized that it life is an it's an ongoing set of challenges. So it's mm -hmm. not like we do one thing one time and we don't have to do anything else. So I love that you have created this, you know, if you can just keep remembering salt. So we have the salt and then the A. A is for a line. So okay. I want you to come back to the truths. And we'll talk more about these at the end. But the core truths that we want to think about, usually I'll say something like, I am positively expecting great results no matter what I see in front of me. I gratefully welcome all positive experiences and outcomes in my life, including all that is happening now. I trust that everything is always working out for my highest good and the highest good of all involved. And so it is, right? So we want to bring ourselves back into alignment with the truth of what we know is possible and in truth with our greater wisdom and bring ourselves back into that space of, I call it faith. Not everybody has, it doesn't have to be a faith that's external to yourself, but just trusting in, in the master plan that everything is serving me, either making me stronger, more compassionate. Uh, I can always learn from everything that happens to me. And that makes it for me. Okay, and what's, what's the L? <laughs> the L is listen. So once you're in that state of gratitude, acceptance, peace, however far you can get on the emotional scale, and I know you know a lot about that, uh, mm -hmm. then we get to kind of just anchor in and listen. So mm -hmm. we're kind of tapping into that higher wisdom, our intuition. And for me, it's what feels fun? What feels easy? What feels light? And just listening for what is the next step for me to take in this experience. And that's the T, is take action. I want you to do oh, something, okay. anything, just a little baby step that's in alignment with intuition from a place of joy, knowing that everything you do is an act of love and service for yourself and others. So allowing yourself to, and sometimes when I listen to my intuition, it says, go take a nap. Right. Like that, that is sometimes the best thing that we can do uh, yeah. for getting ourselves back into alignment. But I just made this commitment. You know what? I don't want to do anything uh, out of a place of alignment moving forward. That sounds like a real freeing energy releasing situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So um, I, my, the step that I was going to share was so much can happen when you take one step, one piece and one day mm. at a time. And I say that just because of what you said, you know, sometimes we look at life so overwhelmingly and having a set of tools of what you're going to do in advance. It's like if you make your if you make the decision in advance, then your outcome yeah. is likely going to be better. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A hundred percent. Yes. Our minds are imagination, reality creating machines that we rehearse what's going to happen before it actually happens. So we want to be rehearsing gratitude, love, joy, uh, so that that's what we experience. I, I agree because what we vibrate is what we attract, correct? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I loved your tip. This is so great. Um, if people believe just two things, everything is always working out for your highest good of the highest good for all, and everything is all and everyone is doing the best they can 
that can eliminate 95% of your emotional suffering. So how did you come to that realization? <laughs> yeah, so this statistic is not based in anything quantifiable, <laughs> just anecdotally, I have found that no matter what, when I am in a situation, either I'm frustrated by a circumstance or I'm frustrated by a person, like everything in life comes down to uh, things or people. And so with the things, it starts with, okay, I just have to remind myself, everything is working out for my highest good and the highest good of all involved. I may not be able to see how yet, but I'm going to rest in this faith that there will be a way that this is serving myself and the greater humanity. So even things like the hurricane season that we're going through right now, or we had the California wildfires locally, right? right. We can't always see how the things that are unfolding are unfolding for us, but we have to start with an axiomatic belief. Is the universe for us or against us? And so I just want to start with the trust that the universe is for me, that everything that happens is happening for me, not against me. And once I have that perception bias, I can find evidence to support that everywhere that I look. And the second one is also a faith statement. Sorry, go ahead, Lana. No, I was just saying, I am, I'm like, I'm with you because there's so much going on right now. And it's yeah. like thinking negative or thinking positive about it. And it, yeah. bring it, and that's an exercise every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it absolutely is. And the second one is sometimes harder for people to swallow because unlike an act of God, like you, we sometimes attribute evil or intentions to the people in our life that makes it harder mm -hmm. for us to forgive them. But this concept that everyone is always doing the best they can is as old as Socrates. Socrates said there was no evil, there was only ignorance. And so that everybody is always working towards what they think is their best good, what they think will bring them happiness. And it's just a lack of awareness, a lack of understanding of how the world operates that causes us to think of ourselves in opposition to one another, that we are all united in this field of life, whatever you want to call it. And so when we say do unto others as you would have them do unto you, love your brother as yourself, right? That this is all just a reflection, that this cosmic rule is a reflection of the other person is a reflection of our deepest self. And so when people are doing harm, just give them the benefit of the doubt. Always look for the most generous interpretation that you can find that says, you know what? I, I don't know why they did what they did, but I'm going to trust that they were doing the best they could. And, and for ourselves too, that we are always doing the best we can, that we need forgiveness and grace on an almost minute by minute basis as well. Amen, sister. Yeah. So I, just in alignment with what you just said, we generally judge others by their actions and ourselves by our intentions. So if mm -hmm. you consider a person's possible intention, which could be many, but you can go to the most positive, right? Um, yeah. And instead of looking at their action to gain some understanding. And for me, that has eased a lot of frustration. Yeah. That we want to attribute them the best we can. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry, my network is still cutting kind of in and out there. But so your your final message, I want you to be able to talk a little bit about this. So I love your message. You're infinitely powerful and unconditionally 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 loved. So mm -hmm. you've had something that you had an offering for people. If you could explain that to us and where. Yes, you absolutely. So I just want you guys to have a PDF, a one page PDF that you can download and print and keep on your refrigerator or uh, by your office wall. And if you want to go deeper, you can find me at houseofthehealers.org. We are pulling together some of the most amazing healers on the planet to be able to serve the world in a much bigger way. And so, yes, you can find me, you can find other incredible healers on that site and really I uh, want to make sure that you have all of the resources that you need to live your best and brightest life. Thank you. And we really, really, really need healers, don't we? Because everybody's mm. hurting. And honestly, it's like I use a lot of different people because everybody yeah. has something different to offer. So yes. it's really good to be open. So thank you so much, Caitlin. I really appreciate you being with mm -hmm. us today. And I'm going to put you in the green room and come and visit with you when I'm done. <laughs> thank, thank you, Lana. You. You're welcome. Bye.
So just remember you are loved and it is your choice to feel good daily. You can reach me at happy healing, um, happy healing dot me. And remember to keep all the, everybody that's suffering around the world right now in your prayers. Thank you. Oops. I gotta get to my video. There we go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> about my services and products at happyhealing.me. Make sure to join me every week for a new episode on the Superstar Entrepreneurs YouTube channel.